very rare I actually get to come out and shoot some photos just for the joy of taking pictures. Because one of the things about doing photography for a living is that you have to photograph what your clients want and very few clients actually want to pay for a picture of a church standing on its own in the landscape. But it's been such a long time since I shot a landscape picture just for the fun of it and came out here to see if we could get a sunset. Well, this is a brilliant location because not only is it a ruined building and ruined buildings are always kind of interesting, it's all alone in the landscape and it's rare you can do that. You have to do research. You've got to use your seven blocks of photography. Use your block one, your brilliant brain. Do research before you come out. You're not going to get great pictures just by walking with the dog. So we've got the sun over here. We're probably getting on for an hour away from sunset. So if I shoot in this direction, I know, hopefully, I'm gonna get a lovely red sky, something cool going on, but I don't know. Whatever, the light level is low, you know? By that, I mean the angle is low. So there's some interesting shapes and shadows. The first thing I need to do before choosing anything else is to walk around and have a little recce. Think about some angles and see what I think will work so that when the light is right, if we do get a red sky, you're already in position and you know what you're gonna shoot. Things always look much, much, much more interesting when you've got the light behind them. The issue that you've got looking at this right now is that you can see the stone and you can see me, but you can't see the sky. And that's because our eyes and our brains interpret light completely differently to the way the camera does. And that's why we have post-production. That's why we have raw files and Lightroom and things like that. So it's the sky that's gonna be interesting, but if we expose the camera for the sky, you can probably see I've gone completely black, the church looks a bit of a silhouette, and you've got maybe a little bit of red, bit of blue going on in the sky, but the sky looks more interesting. To bring that out for real, so you can see both of us, we're gonna to have to do a bit of post-production work, and then it will match what our eyes can see. This is really important to get your head around. Post-production isn't just about cheating, it's about making things look real, as well as doing crazy HDR stuff and all that arty thing, if you like. Something else I'm going to do with this shot, I nearly always shoot in uh, Aperture Priority, as I'm sure most of you know. So I thought this time, let's just do it in manual mode, and I'll talk you through what I'm doing to give those of you struggling with how do I shoot in manual mode a little bit of an idea. It's really important to under understand how to shoot fully manual. Uh, there's a link in the text below this video for you to go to my how to shoot in manual mode video. I'm not going to explain all of it here. Um, but it is important to know how to do it because if you're using a semi-auto or auto mode and the camera messes it up because the light meter gets confused, you need to know how to step in and take control of your camera. So first off, what ISO? I'm going to set 100 ISO because I want really fine, quality, fine image quality and I may well shoot a sunset from the tripod. I don't know yet until it happens. So let's set an ISO of 100. Aperture. Well, from here, let's just go for a middling aperture. I'm going to see what I can get. I'm going to go for about F8. F8's a lovely aperture. I do enjoy F8. Um, but the lens performs really well at F8 and that's one of the reasons I'm choosing it. It'll also give me nice front to back sharpness at this distance. Focal length, I'm probably going to go fairly wide, 24mm, because I want to include the scene, I want to include the sky. That's last of all is going to be the shutter speed. This is all to do with my seven building blocks of photography. It's thinking your way through the shot. Um, right, I need to line myself up so that I get the sun just coming through that sort of gap. If I shoot from here, Hopefully you can see over my shoulder. So if I focus on the church, let's just take a test exposure. So what we got now, <laughs> completely by chance, my shutter speed was set on a 500th, and that looks pretty good. But looking at the histogram for that image, I can see that the shadow details are really blocked up. They're hard against the left-hand edge of the histogram, pretty much. And I've got a bit of space to play on the right. So I'm going to brighten my shot up a bit. How? leave the shutter open a bit longer. I don't want to mess with my aperture because that'll mess with my depth of field and all that stuff. So let's slow down that shutter speed. Let's go from a 500th of a second. Let's just go down about two thirds. Let's just take it to a 3 20th. Shoot the same picture. Focus on the church. Put the church lower right corner. I quite like it down there. That's showing me... It's a very subtle difference to look at in the back of the camera but the histogram takes a little march to the right and you can clearly see that there is more detail now. I'm gonna go a little brighter again. Let's take it from a 320 to a 250th of a second. So the shutter's staying open that little bit longer, which hopefully will capture a tiny bit more of this 
shadow detail. Yeah, I think that's good. We just quickly look at our histograms. Here's the first shot. You can see it's well to the left. The middle shot, it's moved to the right a bit more. And the final shot, just that tiny bit more. But I think there's going to be enough data there for us to bring the sky down and pump the church up a little bit in post-production. So there we go, there's one shot. I'm going to have a look and see what some other angles are because I still want to make sure I get a sunset. Kind of like this up here. Really have only come forward just a little tiny bit, uh, but moved to the right a little bit. Because, look, can you see this shadow running across the grass here at my feet? By being on the edge of the shadow, we're putting the sun right on the corner of the building. And yeah, I know what some of you are saying. You're going, yeah, but there's lens flare, Mike. I can see lens flare. <clears throat> Is lens flare so bad? I think it looks quite cool and arty at times, actually. I really quite like it. So I'm just going to shoot a quick shot from here um, and see what happens. Again, we're still shooting in manual. Um, let's just see what my shot is. Now, I'd like to get a little tighter on the church. Now, I could shoot this with a wider lens and be closer to the church. But I prefer to shoot it from further back and use a slightly longer focal length. Where am I? I'm at about 35 millimetres. 35 millimetres on full frame, for those of you who are going to worry about that. Because... I don't want to get too much convergence. I don't want the sides of the church sort of bending inwards like this. I want to try and keep them fairly straight. Um, so let's see what this looks like from here. It is fairly straight, but because I'm having to tilt the camera up a little to look at it, I am still getting some convergence. I want it as straight as possible. I might better correct that fairly quickly in post-production. But what I'm going to do is actually shorten the lens a little bit. I'm going to go back to about 30 millimetres to give myself a bit more space in the composition. And this is going to be one of those rare occasions where I will crop into the image a bit and then use Photoshop to correct the perspective. Because we don't see buildings tapering in like that, do we? Our eyes, you know, it, it straightens it up for us. But the camera needs help. Right, the sun's moved a bit, so I'm going to go to my left a little bit more. See how quickly the light changes whilst you're talking. What do we got? Again, looking at the histogram. Yeah, I like the way the light's coming through, but again, I think I can afford to increase my exposure a bit. The histogram is heavily to the left. I want to bring it to the right a bit. My shutter speed is currently set on a 500th, because so I put it back where we were. Let's just take it down. Let's go to a 320, just to get a little bit more detail into that stonework. And let's get over here a bit to get the sun in the right place. Notice all this moving around, you know, you've got a kind of tiny movement sometimes of just bending your knee and just going that much from side to side makes all the difference. Histogram. Yeah, that little march to the right is only a tiny bit, but it's going to put a little bit more data in there that Lightroom is going to be able to get hold of. So I think that is looking pretty good. But I think I'm now just going to wait for our sunset and see what we can do with that. I've had another idea. I know I said that was the last one. But this side of the building, this side of the stonework, we've got, there are little reflections going on up here in these flints from the sun that's over there. Now they may turn red if the sky goes red as the sun gets lower. So it's always worth walking around thinking, use your first building block of photography. It's so important, I can't tell you, way more than settings or anything else. Now, from this side, we're a bit higher in the land, and that means that the horizon is a little more intrusive in the back of the church. So remember, how do we move things around within the composition? How do we rearrange the elements? Really simple, isn't it? All we've got to do is just kind of get lower. By dropping down here, I can almost hide the horizon behind the church, and hopefully that will work beautifully. Right, enough gabble from me. Let's see if we get a red sky. I'm in position, I'm waiting for it to happen. Now you can sometimes get some really nice sunsetty shots that are quite delicate before the sun has set. As you can see off to my left here, the sun is still a bit above the horizon. It's just behind those clouds and it might look quite nice in an image. So just shoot a few, but don't run around trying to hoover up too many. Concentrate on one thing and get it right. So focus on the church. With my shot composed, I'm using evaluative metering mode, which I always do. My camera is telling me that I need an 80th of a second shutter speed at f8. 
for the correct exposure. So let's just get my shot lined up and see what that looks like. I'll tell you what, it's not far off. Cameras are really pretty good at calculating sunsets on their own. Um, don't try using spot metering mode though, because unless you meter in a very specific place, you may find it'll mess up your exposure. I'm looking at my histogram, always check your histogram, and I'm gonna do a safety shot a little lighter. So I'm just gonna take that from an 80th down to a 50th. I'm shooting at 24 millimeters, so I shouldn't get camera shake. I'm nicely braced and a little bit more exposure into the church. Okay, let's just wait and see what happens if the sky goes really red. We haven't got the red sky that I was hoping for, but that's just the way it goes, you know. Photography isn't about rushing around going click, it's about using your brilliant brain and thinking for a moment. So, you know, we've been out here, we've shot a couple of pictures already, and I think there's a couple of nice enough images, and in part two, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do to those raw files in Lightroom to sort of bring them to life a bit and get them looking more the way I saw it. But yeah, we haven't got the color in the sky, even though it looks quite nice in the video camera. I'm a complete silhouette. Um, what happens if you brighten it up, Simon? I don't even know if the video camera can cope with seeing me I don't know no we still can't see me even though the sky went bright and this is what I mean about our eyes see light completely differently to cameras because I can clearly see the camera looking in your direction and Simon behind the camera can clearly see me but the camera can't see the sky and me it can't go there this is why post-production is so important so anyway I'll see you in part two let's have a look at the images that we've shot already we had a sneaky idea. Sorry for the grainy picture, viewers. We've had to pimp the gain on the video camera like mad. Can you see on the church, there's a little bit of a highlight going on across the building. As we were walking back to the car, Simon just said, why don't we put the headlights on the car shining up through the gate just to put a highlight on it? Because there's some quite good dark blue sky, a little bit of magic air going on. Let's just shoot that and then we'll leave. So, right, camera. What are we going to do with that? I've got to use a tripod for this because obviously it's dark. So what's my exposure going to be? The camera is telling me that a correct, in inverted commas, exposure is off the scale incredibly low. Hang on, let's just rack that round. What do we got? It's saying it wants over 30 seconds exposure, but remember your camera wants it to be mid-gray. I want it to be a bit darker than that. I want it to be a little bit darker. But also remember, it's best to shoot with your histogram to the right a bit and darken it in Lightroom rather than try and brighten up something that's too dark. So we've got our highlight on the building. Uh, I'm going to have to open my aperture up a bit. We're quite a long way away, so I don't mind shooting at 2.8. Right, so shutter speed. Let's do what the camera says it should be. That's a 13 second exposure at f2.8. So I'm going to have to stand here and wait. The shutter's open. The light is coming into the lens. It's burning into the shutter, slowly it's burning into the shutter, burning into the sensor. Slowly, slowly, slowly. What have we got? You can see, looking at that, it looks way too bright because it's in the middle. We've set it as the camera wants it. Mid gray, bright. We want this to look dark and moody and magic hour. We might be able to darken that in Lightroom, but I'm just gonna take my exposure down. Let's just pull that down. So it says it's about two stops underexposed and shoot it again. So it's gonna be a four second exposure this time. Shooting manually. I think that looks quite nice. So certainly in the back of the camera it looks nice, but Something to be aware of is when you look at these LCDs when it's dark like it is now, your pupils are wide open, but your LCD hasn't changed. So it makes it look incredibly bright. Always use your histogram and your best brain. Otherwise, you can get in trouble. Cool. I think we can probably do a little bit of something with that. But until we get back into Lightroom, we don't know. So anyway, enough from me. See you in part two. We'll have a fiddle with this in Lightroom. Now it's time to go. It's getting cold.